What is going on guys? What is going on 27 squad? Welcome back into another video. Today we're going to be doing the offensive film review for the New York Giants versus the 49ers. We're going to be going over what I liked, what I didn't like, and what the Giants plan was in this game and how they were not able to execute that. Obviously only scoring 12 points, putting 12 points on the board in this game. So right off the bat, this is the second play of the game, I believe, second or third, something like that. This is on the first drive and right off the bat i knew that what the giants wanted to do and how the 49ers reacted to our offense and and what they watched on our um what they watched of our offense in the film review so if you look here the giants are going to run the yankee concept that they run every single game and it works i do love the yankee cost i do like when they use it it's very easy very simple but it opens up a lot so as you guys can see here when you talk about this yankee concept you're gonna have you're gonna have somebody going uh taking an over route and they're gonna have somebody clearing out either on a post post corner however you want in this case it's just a straight up um straight up fly route and jalen hyatt likes to do that jalen hyatt's very good he doesn't just um run in a straight line he'll gash that zone he'll run slice right through that zone impales the zone that, that he's just very good at that um the way he glides very good and so he's perfect for these type of concepts now usually this works usually we get these linebackers to bite on play action they're not even bro this is the beginning of the game beginning of the game they don't even care about our play action look at that you don't see fred warner or 46 here, I don't even know who that is, and Dre Greenlaw, these guys do not bite at all. They go right back to where they need to go. They play quarters defense. They play, you know, far back and, like, cover four looks. And you see they leave this flat wide open. Dre Greenlaw's got this whole side to himself. And then uh, they've got this corner here playing this flat. So the Yankee concept does not work here. And it shouldn't have just by the way the 49ers play and just, just the linebacker play was phenomenal. But you see they dumped it off to Daniel Bellinger, who I thought was going to have a bigger game in this game because he's the underneath guy that the Giants want to kind of uh, use him for. But um, yeah, th this is this is how the Giants were going to attack the Niners. And I, and I was OK with that. We're going to go through a lot of plays where the Giants kind of take what the defense gives them. And they could have done that throughout the entire game to set up the deep pass. But they just did not do that. They try to get a little cute in some plays and we'll go over that. Now, let's talk about this offensive line. Right. Uh, Evan Neal. Take a look at Evan Neal. We're going to let this play uh, roll out. This is the same exact play. OK, how how on earth Isaiah Hodgins helps out on a chip. And Evan Neal still can't get his arms on the inside of Nick Bosa is ridiculous. And Nick Bosa still has inside leverage, still has the inside here. You got to win that battle. He gets in, he, he he hits a little rip move, and he's free. And Daniel Jones has to throw it. Now, Daniel Jones threw it, and this was fine. This, this play was kind of irrelevant, right, from Nick Bosa. But this really set up how Nick Bosa was going to be successful in this game. Evan Neal... Just can't get it on the inside. Wasn't able to get good positioning. Was reaching across his body to the right. You had to get in front of your opponent. Wasn't able to do that. He gets right around. I again want to highlight the linebacker play. And this is the type of linebacker play that I want for the New York Giants. Look at the way Fred Warner and these linebackers move in zone. Okay. Half the time when we watch our linebackers play, they stay right at this five-yard marker and they're like protecting the sticks. I don't know if that's something that Wing Martindale wants, however the case, but you're always seeing a tight end sneak up right behind here. I don't know if you can see my mouse, sneak up right behind here, behind these linebackers around the 10-yard uh, mark and uh, get an easy completion right over the linebackers' heads. Constantly, you've seen that in the preseason, you saw that last season, but look at these linebackers flowing back. Nobody's in front of them, they flow back, and they're like, they're not concerned with Matt Breida. They see Matt Breida there, they've got one guy picking that up, Matt, um, Fred Warner then picks it up as well. But look, everybody's covered. Everybody's covered, and you're forced to make a tighter throw to Matt Breida, who is the guy on the shortest route. And that's how you that's how you flow in zone as a linebacker. And that's what that's the difference between the Giants linebackers and how we and how we play our backers and other teams. Another team that does a really good job at that is the the Carolina Panthers with Frankie Louvu and Shaq Thompson. And 
this is this is very it's very hard to complete a ball over the middle when you have competent linebackers who just when nothing's open when nothing's short they start to flow back start to take care of these routes developing behind them nobody's open look how well they flow look how well they pick up on darren waller okay i'll run this in slow motion you got fred warner picking him up he drops him gets to brita this linebacker then picks him up nobody's open you have to make a tighter throw here to Brita, which was a good throw. And you're forcing that. This is what the Giants game plan was going into the game. And you, it was a good game plan. It's something that could work. And you're going to open up. And, but you got to run the ball to set up the play action. Those RPOs, short passes to set up those deeper passes. To set up the plays downfield. Because you're gonna, it's going to be a hard time trying to get the Niners to get back closer to the line of scrimmage you have to just spam those short passes exactly what the rams did with puka nakua and you see here giants run uh rpo play action paris campbell short and this is exact this is fine this is a quick five yard gain and and you, you can move the sticks the next play with another five yard gain you play methodically this was fine you don't need to to you know have a 10 yard play all the time. This is completely fine. You find the soft spot here. Let it play out here. Look, nobody's guarding the flat. They play quarters. Look at the look at their defense. They lead the flats wide open and they don't worry about that. You know why? Because look how great they break on the ball and they don't allow yak yardage. The Giants had a total of 19 yards of yak yardage. 19 yards as a team. Okay? This is another example here, and I love how they're taking advantage here. Look at, they're leaving Paris Campbell wide open. This safety is responsible for Campbell. They're going to be on a blitz. They're going to send Hafunga, who was playing a, like a hook zone, it looked like, at safety. And he's going to play deep safety now. Now they're going to have this safety with a lot of cushion on Paris Campbell. Quick out. Pick up those quick yardage. Now, I don't know what's going on with Paris Campbell. He just cannot. He's supposed to be like the yak yardage king. And the way he catches these balls... This does not set him up. I don't know. It's always Paris Campbell. The way he turns around, it goes upfield. It's never in stride. I don't know if it's Daniel Jones placement thing. Seems fine to me. But just the way he turns around, he shouldn't turn around. He should just go straight upfield. But that being said, um, that's exactly what the Giants came out here wanted to do. And they should have stuck to that. They should have, they should have stuck to it. If you guys watched the Rams offense versus the 49ers offense and you guys saw the amazing performance by Puka Nakua, the rookie receiver, he wasn't doing anything crazy. He was just taking that Cooper Cup role, finding the soft spots in zone and moving the chains that way, staying patient, playing methodically. And he had like 15 receptions for like 140 yards just by doing stuff like this that you see Wandale doing. Turning around right on a hitch. Nobody's on you. Just turn around, wait for the ball. That's, that's exactly how you work against a team that just plays downfield. They worry about the downfield stuff. Go ahead and just take what the defense gives you. You don't need to send Jalen Hyatt to test out a defense that, that plays very well downfield. Just take what the defense gives you. Another example here with, with Darren Waller. Quick little spot route. Right in the middle. Right, right in front of... Fred Warner getting quick, easy yardage. That's how they should have moved down the field. Why is that? It's going to force these linebackers to play a lot closer, and you are going to have an opportunity to set something up right behind them. You're going to have that opportunity. You can you can get Waller to, to have them bite on a shorter route, and you can send a guy like Paris Campbell right behind them. You can do stuff like that if you keep with the short passes and you force these linebackers to come back down because you just are spamming them. Now, the Giants tried exactly what I said, setting up those short little passes, then airing it out deep, but they just didn't have the right play calls to do that. Okay, you see here, Darren Waller and Jalen Hyatt, they're both going to go deep. Waller's going to run a wheel route, a little out and up, and then you've got um, Hyatt clearing out. But you have no, once these things are not open, once these routes are closed, you only have two routes out there because you're max protecting over here. And while, uh, and Daniel Jones is still under pressure and you're forced to dump it off to the running back who makes a good decision to roll with the quarterback. But this was not part of the plan. They were really banking on these two routes. One of these two routes opening up deep and it's just not going to happen. Not yet. You didn't set up, you didn't set up the run very well you didn't set up play action very well because you're not running the ball at all okay and you're not 
you this is still early early in the game you didn't spam those short little passes to set up those deeper plays and you only have two routes going back there because if you look at the offensive line you've got Bellinger staying for, for the block six man protection and it, it still forces Daniel Jones to to get out the pocket and you're setting up you only got two guys on routes it's not ideal not ideal that's not how you, that's not how you move the ball downfield we don't have the guys to do that now this made me very disappointed in the Giants offense okay you're here at the 10 yard line backed up to your own end zone you've got Nick Bosa on this side Evan Neal's already a liability you've got Bellinger who's supposed to ta be tasked with um hitting a little chip on Nick Bosa and you're going to set up a rollout to Nick Bosa's side let's see how that turned out Again, again, Bellinger is not in line. He's in the slot. He's not in line as a blocker. They don't have Bellinger in line as a blocker. So you're already putting Bellinger in an impossible situation. Look at the gap that you have here between Bosa and Bellinger. This is not on Evan Neal. He's supposed to be flowing over here. All right. And then you got, you got um, Sterling Shepard coming from the backside. And he's, he's supposed to be the dump off there, but you don't even allow that to happen because you got you know where Nick Bosa lines up. It's not like he's a, he's a guy that goes everywhere. He lines up on this side all the time. Why do you have a a rollout, a bootleg here set up at in the in the, your own end zone, in your own end zone on Nick Bosa's side? How on earth did you expect this to go? This this was the only outcome. You know, Doctor Strange won. There's only one outcome, all right? And this was the outcome. There's just, I, 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 it makes me scratch my head at coaching why they allow that type of thing to happen. All for, a, all for what? Setting up Sterling Shepard? You're not going to hit Waller. These guys are very, look at how they, look how they pick up Waller. They don't even know that Daniel Jones is sacked yet. And look how they pick him up. I mean, it's just, you were destined to fail here. You're lucky it wasn't a safety. You were destined to, to fail there. Now, I really like this. There's not much to go over as far as like schematic wise, but I really wanted to highlight this because I enjoy plays like this. I enjoy um, Daniel Jones trusting his receivers to do, and I want to see more of this, man. Jones with a good back shoulder throw straight to Darius Slayton, man. Uh, it wasn't exactly back shoulder, but Slayton was able to force enough separation. I, I don't think he pushed off. In my opinion, he didn't push off, but um, with a good, just quick back shoulder throw for an easy first down. That's the type of stuff I want to see, man. I love that they're starting to, to do that more often now because that's something you never saw them ask Daniel Jones to do. Now, here is the infamous viral tweet of Daniel Jones missing Jalen Hyatt. And listen, man, J Daniel Jones has to make throws like this. I know the margin for error is very, very low when it comes to this team because we don't have a lot of opportunities but you can't afford to miss these things man when you sign a contract like you did you are telling the team you are going to make plays when they present themselves you cannot use the excuse of the offensive line anymore you're not on a rookie contract you are paid you have a second contract you have to make plays like this here's Slayton in motion going to be stacked up here and Jones under pressure but listen he has time he has time to set up his feet and throw this ball to Hyatt has time if you see Hyatt the way like I said Hyatt is a gazelle man that's my nickname for Jalen Hyatt a gazelle he slashes and impales through through defenses without hesitation all right there's very little hesitation when he knows how to get his, get around all right this could have been just a straight up fly route who knows but he made it look like a corner route okay he made it look like a corner and with the way Jalen Hyatt was running you throw this ball to the sideline, Hyatt's already running in that direction. You're, you're throwing away from these defenders. You set your feet, you air this ball deep, Hyatt's coming down with it, man. And a lot of people were like, oh, where, where, where do you want Daniel Jones to throw this ball? I'll tell you exactly when. I'll tell you when you throw this ball. Set your feet right now. Set your feet and throw it right now. You don't need to throw this on the run. Set your feet, launch that bitch, okay? You are going to, you're going to hit him at the sideline, throw that at the sideline. He's going to track the ball and catch it away from these defenders. You don't need to hit him all the way downfield for a touchdown. You can throw this to the sideline to make sure those defenders don't make a play on the ball. You have to make a play here. 
And check this out, though. Listen, the offensive line held up here for the most part. I don't want to say that they did a good job because they did not. But they held up here. This was, a, guys, one, two, three, four, five, six guy blitz, six man blitz. Daniel Jones had time to escape the pocket. They are not, look at the momentum of these guys. Okay, a lot of people like to use screenshot, screenshot, um, you know, film reviews. Not me, okay, we're on, we're on video here, okay. Look at the momentum of these guys. They are not fast enough to catch up to Daniel Jones before he has time to set his feet. He could already set his feet and threw that ball. He could already done that. Jalen Hyatt's looking for this ball. Set your feet and throw it. And if it's incomplete, it's incomplete. Fine. But Daniel Jones makes a heads up play here. And he's able to get this ball past. I guess it was past. I mean, he doesn't need to get it past the line of scrimmage, I don't think. But um, this, this goes down as an incomplete pass. Heads up play by Daniel Jones there. But you have to see J Hyatt. Okay, listen. You only have two routes going downfield with a dump off. Dump off is obviously not an option. He sees that right off the bat. You're looking at these two routes over here. You got Slayton. He's covered. The only other option is Hyatt. Fuck it. Hyatt is out there somewhere. Throw that bitch, man. Hyatt's looking for it. He's looking for it. You, you got to throw. And this is why the margin for error is so freaking low. A lot of it is because of the wide receivers. But when those wide receivers win on their routes, you have to execute. You have to, you have to make sure you make those plays, Daniel Jones. But in this case, this is why the margin for error is so low. Who's open? Nobody's open. And it forces Daniel Jones to the ground. This is a four-man rush. Shane Lemieux, we're going to go to the box view in a second. But look at these routes. Here's Waller. Diamond release, really slow diamond release to a slant. Extremely, uh, extremely slow. But he was trying to delay there to try to create space. I understand that. But he's just not fast enough. Here's Slayton, not able to get off at number two. Number two. On him like glue. Good coverage. Just, just This is just great coverage. These guys are just not, they don't have that fire in them to get open. Paris Campbell has a hard time getting open too. His yards of separation on these routes is just not good. Okay, he tries a little little stutter release and uh, doesn't work. He has a really hard step inside, doesn't work. Nobody's open, man. And that's what forces Daniel Jones to the ground. But that's why it's ever, ever more important that when a, a play like that, higher play shows up, that you have to execute, man. You can't afford to miss stuff like that because this is what you're seeing most of the time. And you have to execute. Shane Lemieux is just garbage. And I know that Javon Hargrave gave all the interior linemen a hard time today, but Shane Lemieux did not give Daniel Jones any time to throw at all. I mean, it was just instant, right? Instant. And we saw the play. Nobody was open anyway. I understand that. But it just doesn't give Daniel Jones a chance. It doesn't give him a chance. If there was a route that, open, that opens up, this probably would still be the same result. The same result. Shane Lemieux just couldn't hold on. Couldn't set that anchor. Couldn't set that anchor. He's about to get knocked to the ground. This, I felt like, was a really good throw by Daniel Jones. Great anticipation. A lot of people want to see more in anticipation from Daniel Jones, including myself. I want to see him just know, have that chemistry with the wide receiver, know where he's going to be at a certain time. And if it wasn't for Hodgins technically being held here, he looks like he's past the line, past the five yards when he's still being held probably six or seven yards and it gets Hodgins off the off the mark now it is it is a little bit of a question why he took an outside release here a little bit of a question if you have a seam route and you have nobody here look there's no linebackers here why are you taking outside releases and you get jammed up but but this this corner gets away with a hold here and but Jones has good anticipation I don't know if you can see that ball but let's go to a box view here I don't know if we could see that ball. Throws it. It's there, man. It's there, but if it's, if if Hodgins doesn't get held, that's a completed pass. Unfortunate for Hodgins, he didn't have no production in this game. He couldn't get open. He's just not fast enough. He's a possession guy. I knew I knew that that was going to be the case for Hodgins. Here's another Shane Lemieux just mess up here. This is inside zone. Javon Hargrave, like I said, was an absolute menace this entire game. Uh, he had a bigger impact probably than Nick, than Nick Bosa did. Now, Javon Hargraves wraps this up, right? But let's just pretend John Michael Schmitz actually holds on to, to Javon Hargrave and Brightwell has a clear lane. This would have still been... This would have still been... 
a clear screw up because Fred he just let Fred Warner buy. Okay, you're running inside zone. You got to run to, you know, get up in these levels and start to, you know, elevate, move up to the second level. You got to make sure you hold on here. You got to make sure you hold on here. He instead allows Fred Warner to swim right by him. Who, Shane Lemieux, who are you expecting to pick up Fred Warner here? He's by himself. Everybody has a man. This was supposed to be your man. Inside zone here, when you have this flow in inside zone, you're supposed to chip him, get up right up field. You're going to expect um, Warner to come down here, and that's your guy. That's your guy. Okay? You got Bellinger handling this uh, this linebacker here. That's your guy, Lemieux. You you can't afford to let him by and then move on. Try to move on to the third guy. You run right into Marcus McKeithen and force McKeithen to miss his guy. Look at this. Just pretend that Javon Hargrave gets taken out to play by John Michael Schmitz. This this run still goes nowhere. It still goes nowhere because of Shane Lemieux. Technically, Shane Lemieux didn't impact this play because Javon Hargrave wrapped it up. But like I said, opportunities, opportunities. Should John Michael Schmitz hold on to Javon Hargrave here and he's successful and Brightwell has a clear lane, this would have still been the same result because Fred Warner is free right here. He's free. And I got something for the rest of the offensive line as well. Evan Neal and Josh Zudu, both of them were terrible on this play. This was the face mask penalty on Josh Azudu just letting Cleland Farrell, Cleland freaking Farrell, the first round bust taken like fourth overall, just going right by him. Notice something. Do you want to notice something? What What is Josh Azudu missing here? What happens here? Where's the kick slides? Where Where's Where's the, the pass set? He just like, it looks like he's just, he's running. He's running straight at Cleveland Farrell. There is no technique here whatsoever. You look like a guard playing tackle. You absolutely look like a guard playing tackle. I don't like how people are saying they like Josh Azudu and they want him to play tackle. He can't play tackle. He's just here to fill in a fill in a role until Andrew Thomas comes back. I don't even think he's better than Evan Neal right now. I think Evan Neal had played a little bit better. Look at Evan Neal get to like, get in his pass set and kick slide a bit. Now he still messes up too. But Josh Azudu just like, he just straight up runs <laughs> at Cleveland Farrell. He panics and runs. Okay? And both of these guys screw up. We're going to go slow motion so you guys can watch them simultaneously. Pick who, pick whoever you want to watch because they both screw up. All right? And they allow pressure. Now, let's focus on Evan Neal for a second. So what happens is, you got number, I don't know, number 95 here, very hesitates. Almost looks like gives Evan Neal the impression that, hey, maybe I'm going inside because there is a lot of space right here. Forces Evan Neal to stop kick sliding. He hesitates. He stops for a second, stops his feet, makes his feet perpendicular. And there's no back foot here at all. So now you're there. This is not a win rep. This is not, I mean, Daniel Jones did not get sacked here, but this is not a winning rep right here. You hesitated. You didn't move back, and you allowed this guy to get through. And then Josh Zudu, we already talked about. Like I said, this is another example of Max protecting and only having two routes available, and both of them go deep. Once you, once those things are covered, once those two routes are covered, who are you there to throw to? Look at, look at the guys you have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven guys in protection. I believe you also have the running back. Man, eight guys in protection. But, but Brita goes out for a pass. And eventually Paris Campbell too. But both of all, you have eight guys. Eight guys potentially as blo as blockers. And you're still forced out the, pro the pocket. And you still don't have anything downfield. And I don't know what the hell. This is the play that they ran into each other. Somebody messed this up. By the way, who designed this route? Who designed this play? It looks like Darius Slayton. It looks like Darius Slayton was going to cut in for a post, and he's lined up on the outside. And it looked like Jalen Hyatt was going to go out for a corner. This was destined to run in. They were destined to run into each other. They both take... Hyatt takes the outside release. Slayton takes the inside release. They run into each other, and they don't get open. And then um, Slayton makes the, the decision to get open for... Uh, an off-script play, as he usually does. He has that chemistry with, with Daniel Jones. But this, this, 
who tell me how was this play supposed to work how was this supposed to work and then you got paris campbell showing up late but he's covered immediately covered immediately covered how is that supposed to work and this is why we couldn't set anything up deep all right this is this is why we had to settle for the short game and this is why for the 49ers gave us the short game and unfortunately, we have to take what the defense gives us because even in the short game, look at this, Wandale's open. We've seen this time and time again already in this film review. You got the slot receiver open, they leave him open, they allow him to make this catch because they're saying, listen, I'm, gonna, I'm willing to bet that this is the only guy you're going to throw to because we're not going to give you time and we're not going to give you any other routes. We'll leave that flat open for you, but that's all you're forced to take. And the Giants are forced to take it. Okay, quick out for Wandale and look, already under pressure already daniel jones just got the ball and he already has to throw before he's hit there was no way you're gonna set up a deep route here and there's only two routes this is max protection there's only two routes you have bellinger and waller pass uh, uh, a triple teaming nick bosa okay and this and this play like is all but like two yards okay this play is like three yards. This is all the defense gave us. All the defense gave us. And you know what? We were forced to take it because on a four-man rush, max protection. I don't know how much I can stress that to you guys. Four-man rush, max protection. You have the running back and two tight ends in there. And you still have to throw the ball and settle for a three-yard pass. It, it's, it's insane to me. And a lot of people are saying the offense held up. The offensive line held up. You got, you're blind, you're blind and you don't watch film. Another infamous play that a lot of people like to talk about on Twitter. And I agree as well. Daniel Jones missed this. I ate my crow and I take back what I said before during the game. Cause I didn't, um, really get a good look at the pressure. I knew that they sent a all out blitz. So that's what made me assume that there was pressure in his face. And when I, from my, what I saw from the replay, from the replay angle, I believe it was like a little bit in this corner that I saw a replay in this corner area. It looked like the defenders were in Jones's face, but he had enough time. This was a relatively clean pocket from the pockets that we've seen so far today. Relatively clean pocket. I know you got you got a guy coming up free over here from JMS, but you got to make that. It's third down and 11. It's crunch time. You don't get opportunity. We saw this in this entire film review, guys. How many times do we see everybody being covered? This was a one rare opportunity that a guy was not covered, and you had Waller there, man. And then... Um, and you have two clear outs here. We've seen this in the preseason, actually. If you guys remember, we've seen in the preseason where you had two clear outs and you had Waller opening up underneath. We, we, they, they showed that in the, in the preseason. Okay. Um, but let's look at Waller from, uh, from a better view here. Now let's freeze frame it. Waller did get his hands on it, but the momentum and the way he had to go back like air, like freaking air Jordan right here is insane to me. Now he didn't jump very high. He's a big boy. Okay. He's not, he, he probably can't jump that high backwards in stride like that. And he look, he could even keep his balance. Even if he held on to this ball, I don't even think he comes down with it. I think we underestimate these athletes. There's no way, guys. First of all, this ball was a little bit behind him. He had to, he had to bend over backwards to get this ball. It does land in his hands, however. But the momentum and him trying to keep his balance, like there's no way he's going to hold on to this ball as he comes down. I, I, there was no way. Look how he comes down to the ground. He has to use his hands to, to, to help him get to, down to the ground. There's just no way he comes down with this ball. You got to make a ba more accurate. Look at this. Look at this. A better view for Daniel Jones. Clean pocket. Relatively clean. Relatively clean. You got to make this throw. And Jones threw off his back foot, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see here. I think Jones throws off his back foot. But... You got to make those throws, man. You're a $40 million quarterback now. I don't know a lot, a lot of people hate hearing that. Even I was kind of annoyed hearing that constantly time and time again. Like, oh, you're a $40 million quarterback. But he's got to make those throws. Those throws and that Hyatt throw, you got to make. But that's all I got for you guys today. I know this may have been a longer one. I have to edit this down. Uh, hopefully it's not too long but i hope you guys got something out of that if you guys want to see the defense let me know in the comment section below if you guys want to want me to uh show individual players again let me know in the comment section below i'll do that for you that being said i'm kid blue and i'll see you guys in the next video Woo!